Our vision for the region started over 15 years ago when we first set up FCM UAE. Our reputation for service delivery has really been outstanding when we look at the type of customers and brands that we have currently in our portfolio. Looking back on the last 10 years where we started off with a presence in only eight countries, today FCM now has a presence in nearly 30 countries across the Middle East and Africa market. The most recent addition has just actually happened in the last several weeks where we now have a presence in Iraq. Why Iraq? Iraq is a key oil and gas location for our customers, for about 20% of our customers in the region. And it was really quite pivotal for us to have a presence on the ground there. We have been working with an agency over the last couple of years, but during the pandemic, we decided to cement that relationship and welcome the agency into the FCM network. This month also, we changed the structural ownership of FCM in the UAE. Up until now, we were in a sponsorship agreement as a foreign company in the region where we actually only own 49% of the legal setup, but we're now 100% fully owned and independent. What does this mean for our customers? Nothing really changes on the day-to-day -day running of the business operations as we've had a great partnership with our sponsor to date, but we're now the only fully owned TMC in the market, giving us real full autonomy over our direction in the future across the region as well. And I'm sure without a doubt, there'll be a few new markets added to the MIA map in the coming 12 to 24 months as well. But for the time being, we're well positioned in key countries across the Middle East and Africa to serve our customers. In terms of other activity in the region, our parent group recently increased its investment in the travel technology company in Dubai called TP Connects from 20% to 70% thus giving us a majority control in the business. And we'll be working a lot closer with the local team here to, to make further enhancements to our business. For our people, the TP Connect Systems is an excellent time-saving uh, benefit during the reservation process, giving them access to fares and rates in one single platform. So they're not looking in different areas. And on the flip side for our customers, this means they are having, there is reassurance that they, have access to all the content in the market, be that low cost carriers, NDC aggregators, and other emerging supplier direct channels as well. So in brief, there's a lot going on now and in the future to ensure we have a strong long-term growth strategy in the Middle East and African market. In terms of other things happening outside of the FCM arena, just recently the government announced the introduction of a corporate tax which will come into effect in the UAE from the 1st of June next year, 2023. There is exclusion for certain companies involved in the extraction of natural resources. Nonetheless, the rates will be applicable from 375,000 dirhams upwards and they will be actually subject to 9% uh, tax on corporate profits. Nonetheless, when you compare that rate to other or countries around the world, it is one of the lowest in the world. And the purpose of the government is no doubt to ensure they are still an attractive uh, region when compared to other regions as well. What will the impact be on travel budgets? Well, that really remains to be seen. But no doubt for some companies, they will be re-looking at their budgets, their forecasts for the year ahead, as a portion of their previous on tax profits will now have to go towards this requirement. Nonetheless, during the pandemic, uh, companies have really looked at their budgets, their approval processes, and the reasons for the need to travel as well. I suppose what's probably more important is they'll really want to ensure they're working with a TMC that can demonstrate value above and beyond the commercial model that they have actually signed up to. Sustainability has always been a hot topic in the region for sure, and within the UAE for many years. We even have residential areas in Dubai that are built with a sustainable purpose. One is actually called Sustainable City, which has even been recognized as the happiest community in the Gulf region very recently. There are even financial institutions offering green mortgages to attract residents and reward them with discounted mortgage rates in comparison to other parts of the city when they're purchasing a property. Uh, nonetheless, during COVID, from a travel aspect, we've seen a, a, a huge spike in customers focusing more on sustainability and using our own FCM reporting platform to calculate emissions and to also offset the impact their travel program is having on the environment. Since the launch of our South Pole collaboration during the pandemic, customers have been engaging more with our account managers here on the regional level. It's really a great initiative where, which we kicked off last year to help customers offset their CO2 emissions some great local real-life projects around the world. 
In terms of events, uh, there's been more and more engagement with our customers as the world has started to open up. We've seen a huge surge in meetings and events in the UAE during the pandemic. And they only closed once during the last two years, whereas a lot of the other countries around the world were in constant lockdown. The UAE, um, from an FCM perspective, has been involved in some major events over the last 12 months. For example, we were working on Dubai Watch Week in November, where we brought in several hundred high profile watch companies and manufacturers and their delegates to the region from all over the world to attend a four day event. We've also been flying in hundreds, literally hundreds of cast and crew into Dubai and Saudi Arabia, as many production and media companies have been taking advantage of the government incentives in Saudi, a strategy really in our campaign to promote the kingdom as a destination. And then just most recently, one customer has approached us for some options to host over 5,000 delegates for meeting and events over the next two years in Dubai. Definitely, we suspect this sector will continue to be busy, which is of no surprise, really. Dubai has done a phenomenal role promoting the country as a destination for meetings and events. And they have a great selection of properties and activities to choose from for those uh, attending. Expo 2020 has been a phenomenal success over the last six months, and we have just hit uh, 20 million visitors. Uh, as we come into a close of the event, the organizers have put some tremendous efforts into attracting not just local residents, but also tourists to come to the UAE with some top line entertainers uh, really being endless from musicians such as Boney M, Earth, Wind and Fire, uh, Bonnie Tyler, uh, Black Eyed Peas to some uh, global uh, role models in the sporting arena such as Ronaldo and Lewis Hamilton. So we've all really benefited from this major event happening in the region, from the hotels to the tour operators, to the airlines, to the restaurants, and also to our staff as well uh, in FCM. Expo 2020 has been a huge success during a pandemic, and there have been lots of strategies to ensure this has been the case. Several airlines actually launched promotional airfares for passengers in conjunction with actually visiting Expo 20, where they launched up to 10% discount on the standard fares. 25% uh, of our local business here in the UAE is made up of actually bringing passengers into the region. Thus, with Dubai being open as a destination the vast majority of time during COVID, our business has definitely benefited from the Expo 2020 event in the last six months, without a doubt. As we've been able to actually use those discounted rates for our inbound passengers coming from abroad into the UAE. On the flip side, uh, what didn't go so well during the pandemic? Firstly, I think the UAE has actually been an exception in the sense that in comparison to other regions around the world, we have been working flat out and actually stayed open, as I mentioned. Our sales have ranged from 50 to 80% this month pre-COVID levels, and March has actually been one of our busiest months since 2019, and we certainly hope that continues. Also, what didn't go so well, I think for a lot of travel agencies and also a lot of uh, other sectors around the world is it's been a fine line in terms of balancing, managing the, the human capital in terms of the staff numbers we actually have with the level of transactions coming into the business. None of us actually have a crystal ball. Nonetheless, with the changes in travel policies and the approval processes uh, and also the last minute government changes in terms of restrictions and requirements, uh, we've seen ourselves having to really juggle with the right number of people to ensure our SLAs are not impacted. At times, it's been a gamble uh, in terms of having our people uh, in the business to service those requirements coming through from our customers. And they definitely have been going the extra mile for customers well into the after hours to ensure service consistency. In terms of opportunities for improvement uh, after going through a pandemic, I think for ourselves, what we did want to look back upon is the efficiencies within our business and automation has been a key focus for us within the region to ensure our people are highly productive and also as much of those transactions that they're working on are as automated as much as possible as well. So we'll continue to work with GDS suppliers and our in-house colleagues to build upon those productivity efficiencies that we actually have as well. Over the last 20 years in this company for myself personally, getting together with our people face to face as a team, a country, a region and a global business has been a core part of our culture. 
And I strongly believe it's one of the reasons for our growth and success over the years. Engagement on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis hasn't stopped for us in the UAE or the Middle East and Africa region during the pandemic. We have continued to engage with our team uh, through various events, be that on yachts, within the office, nights out at bowling alleys and restaurants and other venues to ensure we actually communicate and recognize our people for their performance during the pandemic. Obviously keeping in line with any government restrictions in terms of physical distance and so forth as well. But it has been crucial during a time when there has been a lot of uncertainty in the world. The results of our business are testament to the type of culture we drive and the benefits that it can bring to the business as well. Also it helps to reassure our people of the support we have for them and the constant vision, resilience, and the drive to get through any such events like a pandemic. In line, we also have several customers that have demonstrated the same style as culture that we have within our business. And they too have been extremely successful during the pandemic, being named as a great place to work and a best place for women to work in the Middle East has certainly helped us to build relationships with like-minded customers with similar values such as FCMs. It's not just about the numbers. Obviously, they're very important during a pandemic and company culture and engagement with our people or with your people can really help knock down many barriers to success. Let's get ready to think.